The recent Top Gun Maverick movie featured a memorable scene where the F-18s had to fly really low and fast through a narrow valley in order to stay below enemy radar. Now this term often is used in Hollywood movies, but is there actually something to it? And is it also a factor in civil aviation? Time to answer those questions and talk about radar in general. So let's get started. 7 of November, buonasera, radar contact. Continue descent to 5,000 feet. QNH 1012, transition level. Today's video is brought to you by the Captain Joe book, Read and Do. 100 checklists to become a better version of yourself. Are you looking for a great gift for a friend or yourself? Get to Joe's book and be inspired by 100 motivational checklists for personal growth, acts of kindness, positive lifestyle habits, and much more. Find the link in the description box below. First of all, a little bit of history. Now, in the late 19th century, German physicist Heinrich Hertz first proved the existence of radiomagnetic waves and later on discovered that high-frequency radio waves are reflected by metal objects. Now, a few years later, another German physicist patented the first device to detect metal objects as a means of collision avoidance between ships in dense fog. However, these first devices were very basic and hardly able to indicate a correct distance. Now, leading up to and during the Second World War, multiple nations developed their own radar systems independently, which became better and better and were a key factor in detecting incoming bomber raids. Especially the British put great efforts into it and came up with their chain home early detection radar system. Now, one of the main challenges in the beginning was the immense power needed to obtain targets at larger range. So far, so good, but how does it actually work? Now, RADAR is an acronym for Radio Detection and Ranging, which is basically what RADAR does. Nowadays, there are two different principles in use the old-school primary radar and the more advanced secondary radar. Now, primary radar is based on high-frequency electromagnetic pulses which are being transmitted omnidirectional. Now, omni being the Latin word for all directions. Now, these pulses travel at the speed of light in a fairly straight line through space. Now, once they hit a target, some of the energy is reflected and travels back to the receiver. The reflectivity of a target is based on different aspects like its size, shape and material. Now this is the part which stealth aircraft try to reduce as much as possible in order to be invisible to the enemy radar. Nevertheless, by measuring the time these pulses needed to travel to the target and back, it is possible to derive their distance from the radar station and the rotating antenna is able to detect the bearing from which the reflection is received. However, it's not possible to retrieve any information about the altitude of the target. And that's a massive flaw in the primary radar system, because if there is an obstacle like a mountain or solely the curvature of the Earth between the radar station and the aircraft, the electromagnetic pulses will never reach the aircraft or target therefore cannot be reflected by it and no detection is possible. The aircraft then is below the radar. So to answer the main question, yes, you can fly below the radar. So Maverick and his recruits certainly could fly below the radar to not get detected. But this isn't solely a military scenario. Now, depending on the terrain surrounding an airport and the radar coverage, ATC might not be able to detect you on their radar screen immediately after takeoff, and you might hear something like, Air Joe 123, you are not yet identified, continue on the SID. Now, when reaching sufficient altitude, ATC will then inform you by, Air Joe 123, you are now identified and radar contact established. Now, secondary radar, on the other hand, is a bit more sophisticated. The ground-based radar station, the interrogator, sends a series of electromagnetic pulses with a frequency of 1030 megahertz, which are picked up by the aircraft's transponder. 
Now, depending on the timing between the interrogation pulses, the airplane transponder sends a pulse-coded answer with a frequency of 1090 megahertz, which is then in turn picked up by the radar station on ground. Now, you could say they sort of communicate with each other. Now, there are three different operational modes. Mode alpha sends a transponder identification code. You might have heard the term squawk or transponder code before. For example, during your initial IFR clearance, ATC will assign you a four-digit number consisting of the numbers 0 to 7 in order to distinguish the different transponder signals. Now, mode Charlie additional sends the aircraft's altitude information. And lastly, mode Sierra, now which works a tiny bit different. Each aircraft has an individual, non-changeable 24-bit address, which is basically a radar registration plate. Now, the ground station transmits a so-called all-call interrogation every now and then in order to collect information about all the aircraft and their respective addresses in range. Now, after that, it can send interrogations specifically aimed towards a certain aircraft. Now, the response may contain information like heading, speed, altitude, the call sign, vertical speed, and even the selected altitude, and provides the controller with important information in order for him or her to achieve the required separation between all aircraft. And ATC nowadays uses a combination of the primary and the secondary radar in order to benefit from both advantages of the two systems. For example, while the primary radar alone is not able to retrieve any additional information like the heading and altitude, it is not dependent on an active onboard transponder. So if for whatever reason the transponder of an aircraft should fail or should be turned off, I'll come back to that in a minute, ATC is still able to see you on their screens and provide basic services to you. And as you can see in this picture here, the antennas are often co-located. Another means of aircraft detection is ADS-B, which is short for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, which is also used by service providers like Flight Radar 24, ADS-B Exchange or Flight Aware. As it is more based on satellites and not conventional radar application, we will talk about this in a separate video. So if you clicked onto this video because you're planning to do some drug smuggling in your little Cessna 172 and want to fly below the radar, good luck with that. Even if you turn off your transponder, the old school primary radar is out to catch you. So do yourself a favor and don't risk your license or your life flying low level through the jungle it is not worth it. And on that bombshell, here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. And perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best. Your Captain Joe.